Hello everyone and welcome to our game lab. I'm D. I make games with Godot and I absolutely love it. I mean, I absolutely love making games with Godot. I tried to make a game in just 3 hours and I must say I'm pleasantly surprised by how it turned out. Ok, hold on, don't click off the video just yet. In this video, I would love to share my experience with you. I want to take you through my entire process, share with you how I came up with the idea, my simple game design document and even my code. So let's do this. The rules were simple, try my best to make a game in 3 hours, but if I can't, and this is very important, still publish it on itch.io and I'm allowed to go overtime. The time only counts for actually building my game, that is, any coding, making sound effects, art, music and other assets. Writing a game design document, coming up with ideas, compiling my game or making the itch.io page does not count against the time. If you've seen my last video, you may know where I'm going with this. But if you haven't and don't know what the heck I'm talking about, I entered the try jam number 269 on itch.io. The theme was lights out and at first I wanted to make a platformer because that would be the easiest. Godot already has an example player controller script for a platformer and it would be easy to build on that. Besides, most of the games that I've worked on in the past were, well, platformers. So I started with the GDD. My first idea was to make a game where the lights would be on at the start of the game for about 3 seconds and then go out. The stage would have hazards and obstacles that the player would have to navigate by memory to get to the exit. I also wanted to have a light switch somewhere in the stage that would turn the lights back on for another couple of seconds for the player to have a second look. And to make things even more stressful, I would add a timer, which would reset the level if the player was taking too long to get to the exit or if the player hit a hazard. Yes, this was a lot for 3 hours, I know. I wanted a second opinion, so I reached out to my buddy Chris, aka the Flow TNT, to hear what he thought. He liked my idea but also had an idea of his own, and he gave me a little backstory of his idea so I would be able to see his vision. It was based on a little piece of American history, which is now known as the Battle of Los Angeles, which took place on February 25th, 1942. Shortly after 2am on February 25th, military radar picked up what appeared to be an enemy contact some 120 miles west of Los Angeles. Air raid sirens sounded and a citywide blackout was put into effect. Within minutes, troops had manned anti-aircraft guns and began sweeping the skies with searchlights. It was just after 3 am when the shooting started. I will put a link to the full article below the subscribe button. It was a really interesting read. Anyway, being the sucker for great ideas that I am, I decided that I would scrap my idea and go with this one. But knowing that I only had 3 hours to do this, Chris volunteered to do the artwork and I would write the code and build the game. So we brainstormed the idea for a little while and I made the GDD. Fred is an alien here on earth and just wants to go home. As his rescue ship carefully approaches behind the cover of the clouds, the humans use searchlights that pierce the sky and are shooting at anything that moves. So. Fred must turn off the searchlights so that the rescue ship can survive the attack until the time runs out and he's able to be rescued. Now looking back at this idea, I think that this too was a little over ambitious for only 3 hours. For the player controller, I just needed the player to move left and right. So I just used the example script and moved the parts that I did not need, which was most of it. And I changed the input to use the A and D keys. Then I started on getting the spaceship to move left and right. I used an animatable body 2D node, a path 2D node and a path follow 2D node. I made the animatable body 2D node a child of the path 2D node, and a sprite 2D node and a collision shape 2D node children of the animatable body 2D node. Then I used a remote transform 2D node as a child of the path follow 2D node and in the inspector set the reference of the remote path to be the animatable body 2D node. I added a script to the path 2D node in which I made a variable speed and got a reference to the path follow 2D node. Then 
In the process delta function, I move the spaceship by updating the progress of the path follow to the node. Speed multiplied by delta calculates the distance the path follow to the node should move in this frame. Adding this distance to the current progress makes the node advance along the path at a constant speed, regardless of the frame rate. For the clouds, I just duplicated the spaceship and adjusted the points on the path follow to the node. I was using my developer art for this. But by this time, Chris had some of the official art for me, so I started implementing them into the game. Then I started with the lights. I knew that this would be the hardest part. That is why I left it for last. So basically, I just used an area 2D node for the light and sprite 2D nodes for if the light was being blocked by the clouds or not. I used an on area entered and on area exited signals to show or hide the light sprites based on if the player or the clouds entered or exited the area to the node of the lights. This took way longer than I anticipated and it still is a bit buggy, but time was passing so I started working on the health system for the ship and got the animations working. I added an empty node to the scene, called it game manager and added a script to it. In this script, I handled things like the health of the spaceship, pausing and unpausing the game, showing the game over and win game screens, and restarting the game. Features of the game like making the player turn off the light for a fixed time and increasing the difficulty of the game did not make it into the game. Instead, I just turned off the lights when the player entered the area 2D of the lights and then back on when the player exited the area 2D of the lights. But now that the jam is over, Let's do this. I created an exported float variable called off time. And when the player enters the area 2D of the light and the light is turned off, I created a timer using the await function that uses the off time variable before timeout. I moved the code from the area exited function of the player and called it after the timeout. And since I do not want the code to be run if the lights are off when the clouds enter the area 2D of the lights, I used an if statement to only run the code if the lights are on. That way, the lights will go off for the off time that we set in the inspector when the player enters the area 2D node of the lights. Now for the animations. I made animations using the sprites created by Chris for idle, walk and switch on. And in the game manager script, I made a bool variable called isSwitch and set isSwitch to false, which I use to determine if the player is touching the switch. In the script that controls the light, I had a reference to the game manager. And just after I turned off the lights, I set the isSwitch bool to true and handled all the other functions that go with turning off the lights. Then I created a timer using a wait for a short time, like 0.3 seconds, to allow the switch on animation to play. Then I set a switch back to false. Now in the player script, I use an if statement to check if a switch is false. And I played the idle animation if the x velocity was equal to zero and an else statement to play the walk animation. Then, I use another else statement to play the switch on animation if the is switch bool of the game manager was true. For the spaceship, I made idle damage and critical damage animations and set the idle animation as the default animation and played the damage animation when the ship got hit and the critical damage animation when the ship was at low health. And lastly, let's add increasing difficulty by increasing the speed of the ship over time. An easy way to do this would be for me to get a reference to the alien part 2D and in the label countdown script, change the speed of the spaceship when the timer gets to a certain value. And I could also add any other conditions in here if I wanted to, but I think I would just like to increase the speed of the ship every 10 seconds. To do this is really, really simple. I just add a timer node as a child of the alien part 2D and connect an on timer timeout signal to the alien part 2D script. 
check auto start and set the timer to 10 seconds. Then I make an exported variable for speed increase value. Make a function to increase the speed and simply call this function in the timeout signal that I created. And just like that, we have a simple way to increase the difficulty. Overall, I'm really happy with the outcome of this game jam. I'm trying to push myself and test new limits. Chris really came true because he actually got the artwork done in time. So a big shout out to the Flow TNT for his help. But that being said, I learned a lot about planning and scope. And I also learned that there's a whole lot more for me to learn before I can even start to make my first full game. Thanks for joining me in the game lab. If you liked the video, give it a like. It really means a lot and gives me encouragement to continue to share my journey with you. And why not subscribe if you want to hang out with me again right here on DRADU Games.